Hello, my name is Iris Berman and I'm a licensed massage therapist. And my job today is to help you see how you can use self-massage techniques to help offset some of the stresses and strains that are accompanying our amazing experience of isolation and quarantine. Um, some of the reasons for stress is spending a lot of time in front of screens, You're watching television, binging on this or that, Zoom meetings, uh, playing games, whatever. We're spending an inordinate amount of time on, in front of the screens more than we would normally. That can add to a lot of headaches and, and eye strain. Neck aches too, even depending on how you position yourself. Uh, there's also the stresses that are coming with this quote-unquote new normal. Our new normal includes things for those who have kids with childcare and homeschooling, and that can be a source of friction and frustration and also some successes, but does not take away from the stress that's added to your daily life. Um, if we have pets, there's the added thing of being with them 24 seven, which may not be your norm and might add new dynamics to the experience that you have. Um, also, for those of you who still have a job, dealing with work and home and being able to distinguish between those, creating a space that you can effectively and efficiently work from while still being in isolation perhaps with other people um, and how to set up that dynamic that helps that balance between your home environment and home demands and your work demands. Also for those who don't have a job you've got that added stress of having to be concerned about when you will be able to earn a living again and um, whether you uh, can survive off of the unemployment that you're getting. Uh, and when you will next be able to take care of your bills effectively and efficiently. That can be a source of stress. And for everybody that's making a, their efforts to make contact through um, technology and blessings on the technology that makes it possible for us to survive as well as we have given the situations. But it does bring along some requirements of learning new technologies, which can be quite daunting whether it's homeschooling technology or Zoom meetings or um, uh, meeting, Google meetings with friends. And uh, it can be a stressful situation as learning the new technologies and much less applying them in effective ways. And there's also the biggest one is the concern of the unknown. We really don't know what we're dealing with. We don't know how long we're going to be dealing with it. We don't know what the effect is over the time that we will be experiencing this. So all of those things are major stressors. We also have activity shifts. We're either being much too lazy, sitting around doing nothing but watching or being or hanging. Um, and so we get stiff. So if you're finding that it is a, a challenge for you to be walking from the living room to the kitchen or the bedroom and you find that that causes you aches and pains, that's a sign that you've been sitting a little too long. Also, you might find yourself in strain from overwork. You are doing more of what you used to do, taking more walks or lifting more weights or engaging in whatever activity you normally do, but to a more uh, exaggerated sense because you have more time to do it. It would also maybe from taking on new projects you've been meaning to do anyway, and boy, it's been great to do it, but those new projects might include gardening or house things that you might have been putting off that could be physically demanding. So you could have strains and aches and pains from overwork. All of those things can be effectively um, met with self-massage to offset some of those concerns that you might have. Now, there's lots of tools that you can use to give yourself massage. I mean, the main one, of course, is your hands. You can use your fingertips, the sides of your hands, your forearm, your elbow, all kinds of things to get into the parts that you can reach. For the parts that you can't reach or for ones that are more effectively addressed with tools, there's a load of tools. Now, I put out my little display of tools here. You've got all kinds of pressure tools. Those, those are some of the most enjoyable to do deal with. You've got tools that are wooden pressure tools, um, rollers that you can put on all your feet, or ones like these that you can use along your back that help to address your spine, which of course you can't reach through other means. These also work well with the spine, so does this one. Um, some pressure tools that might get you into some spots that you can't effectively reach between bones and in other places. You've got this lovely set of T-bars and pointy things that really help to get into that. 
or sculpting tools, something like this that you could use that have an edge and all kinds of things to get in and work wonderful areas of your body in ways that would be more effective. Then you've got rolling tools. Oh, there's all kinds of lovely things that roll that you can use to roll up and down and give massage, especially you can do some things that have long handles where you can get to places that are harder to reach. You can even combine some of those things with magnets. There's all kinds of tools that have magnetized ends that you can then roll, or spiky things that you can roll. All kinds of fun things. If you happen to have tools around, which you might have, pull them out. Take them out of the drawer they've been sitting in that you haven't used long enough, or that you use every day. Let's continue to use them. Um, these are two of my favorites for people who have neck strain. Um, they, some fit better than others, and I'll show you some homemade versions of this because every one of these tools was created because somebody had an inventive moment with something that was around them to meet a need that they had. So don't, you don't have to go out and get fancy tools, but if you happen to have them, pull them out and use them. They're fun. As you can tell, I tend to be a gizmo gadget person, so I happen to have a lot of these around. But these are for your neck. They're really helpful um, and work really well. You can also use balls of all sorts. There's all kinds of balls. But for this recreating this thing for the neck, you can take two tennis balls, put them in a sock, wrap the sock around it. Now you've got the same thing here, just by using what is uh, easily around you. Uh, and for things like hands and feet, even a little golf ball is really good to kind of get in there and work areas that you would otherwise do. And balls of all sorts that are either smooth or knobby, those all can be also worked. Especially these are these tools are especially good for the areas you can't reach easily, the back of your your uh, your legs, your back, things like that. This is another kind of fun tool which some of you might have, or you can fashion one on your own. It's basically a rod with some beads that are on it that you can do to roll up and down your back or the back of your legs. It's fabulous. Um, and other things like this, this is a half ball that's like sitting on the floor with knobs that you can use to massage your feet. Because you can't really get to your, well you can, and I'll take you into some things to do with your feet, but it's very nice. Other things that you can use, a lot of you, especially the Pilates people, will have the kind of hard foam rollers. Those are really great for doing certain things. And of course there's vibrators, all kinds of vibrators. Um, you've got single ones tube ones, you've got ones that sit on the floor, ones that, you know, look like they were a repurposed belt sander. I mean, these are some really uh, powerful tools that you can use on yourself, or if you happen to be sequestered with other people, you can work on each other. So those are the tools that you would need. So in order to now use these tools to address the issues that you have, um, the first thing you want to do is identify what is causing you stress? So you're going to look visually at yourself. If you've been out working in, in the yard and it hadn't been for a while, you might want to look for any kind of bruising that you accidentally caused or swelling from overuse or strain. Um, uh, discoloration, which can tell you something about a strain that you might not have even noticed. Um, and if you have any cuts or bruises or things like that, you just want to know what they are because as you're going to go work, you don't want to cause a, a challenge to that. Um, you also want to identify what you're feeling. Do you have aches, strains, pains, discomforts? Identify what you're going to address. And then even look for the emotional side of things. Being in isolation, away from your normal uh, routines, away from the normal people that you interact with with regularity, can cause all kinds of emotional things, whether it's uh, that sense of separation that has you feeling, especially if you're living alone, feeling really isolated. Um, it, loneliness, um, concern for the condition and the situation, and if you have any underlying health conditions, you're going to have an added layer of concern for yourself. So these are I important things to think about. So you want to assess your, your, your concerns, assess what you're going to address. Then what are you going to do? Now that you know why you're here and you know what tools you can use and you know what you want to focus on, what are you going to do? Well, one of the first things that'd be really good to do is find a place within your environment uh, which is relatively quiet and relaxing, something that calms you. 
Um, so you might want to turn off the television. You might want to put some light music on in the background. That sometimes is very calming. But work with the environment that you have to find the most uh, supportive environment to be in. When you go to use any of the body, uh, address any of the body areas, think about following contours where there's ridges of bones or bumps on bones or the soft tissue edges of muscles. When you follow those contours, you're going to be automatically led to the areas that will be the most effective. Uh, you want to sense while you're feeling something and you want to sense for what you can feel, the volume of the tissue. Is it hard? Is it soft? Is it pliable? Is it hot? Um, it, does it have any kind of uh, lumpiness to it? What, it's just sense what you're feeling in the tissue. And this is probably the most important piece. There is uh, something that I call the edge of receptivity. This is where your body will receive the work. Now there's a very fine line between this, um, this re edge of receptivity and pain. The edge of receptivity represents the feeling that you have sometimes if you've ever had it where you go, oh, that hurts so good and you really want to stay with that. That's excellent. At that particular point, the body is open, receptive, and is ready for shift and change. But that very fine line, if you trip over into pain, and don't worry, most of us will not cause ourselves pain, but even still, that fine line, when you go into pain, the body shuts down and resists and is not open for shift and change. So that is counterproductive for your purposes. So understand and sense for that edge of receptivity. What's that place where you're still feeling that you want that touch and you feel that it's really being received? That's the spot. So you want to learn how to sense for that. It's helpful to compare. So what you knew something felt like before to what it feels like now, or what the left side feels different than the right side. Um, and so you want to just learn how to uh, sense that, because that can help you focus on what area has the greater need. Because you know, sometimes we feel a sensation and we say, oh, it hurts over here. But if you feel the tissue, sometimes the tissue on the other side is actually the tighter part. So don't be surprised if you find that to be true. Just be open to what there really is. Because here's a secret. If you learn how to listen to your body, your body will tell you exactly what it needs. So be open to it. And what you're going to do when you have found a tissue that needs addressing and you've done it, I'll give you some instructions on how to address tissue. What you're going to sense for is any kind of shift or change, softening, uh, lightening of sensations, anything kind of change in the tissue. If it's warm, you want to get it cooler. If it's hard, you want it softer, like that. Um, so, this is the beginning. This is, a a, 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 this is the foundation of what you're going to do to take care of yourself during this crazy time. So, do that. Take care of yourself. And do the best that you can to stay safe. I don't need to tell you all the details of not touching your face and washing your hands and wearing a mask and that and that. You all know that. This is the part where you take care of yourself. So good luck and stay safe.